Hello, Tim. Hello. Oh, good evening. Yes, I can hear you all right. Are okay. you for me? Yes, I don't know if we can start. I don't think if someone else is going to join. I don't know if we can go ahead. Um, I, I'm happy with, with whatever you think is best to do, to be honest. Okay. So, so also for today, I don't have, uh, I did not prepare my notes because when I was trying to prepare the notes, I discovered there were some issues. There were some uh, section in the code that was uh, breaking relating to downloading the packet file. Uh, I discovered, the, I just posted the issue on GitHub in which Hadley is still figuring out uh, how he's going to resolve uh, the issue. So that is why I was unable to finish up with my notes because I cannot render the entire notes that I was working on when I discovered uh, that issue. But before we, uh, uh, let me just put in the chat so that uh, John will know that we are starting now. So like for the benefit of those uh, that uh, will be joining, uh, following up with this, is the Alpha DS uh, book club. And uh, today we are discussing uh, chapter 23 of the book, uh, which is about uh, arrow. So like the arrow is just like uh, working with big data. When we have like big data, uh, we want to see how we can uh, deal with such big data that will not fit uh, uh, very well in uh, the memory of our system. Just like our last discussion for last week, we look at another approach on how to handle big data using the database. But today we'll be looking at uh, Arrow, how we can use Arrow to split uh, this data set into a different chunk, then we can uh, see how we work uh, with those uh, data. So that is just basically uh, what uh, this is looking, is looking at the Arrow, which is going to convert those files into what a packet uh, format. Uh, those packet format is gonna be like, uh, we have one CSV file is going to split uh, those uh, CSV file into different chunk. And we are going to just read one chunk of those file into R, then we start uh, seeing how we go uh, from there. I think the arrow it has a very good, uh, it has a very good uh, website in which, uh, which I, I am just putting in the chat. So, so, but uh, for the prerequisite for this chapter, first we need to load our library, which is a tidy verse. Uh, we also need to initialize the library for Arrow. Then, since uh, we are going to use, uh, we are going to, add a, before we wrap up the chapter, we are going to see how we also use Arrow uh, to communicate uh, with database. So we need to load our DB player, which is that, uh, which is still, we are writing the player code. We are converting it uh, to SQL. We are also going to load uh, uh, our doc uh, DB uh, package. So, so the data set in which I will be working with today is comes uh, from this data dot data dot uh, settle. It's just uh, it's like about it's a very big uh, data set which is about uh, about nine. Uh, gigabytes. So this is the data that we'll be working with. So we are using uh, the call, the use, make use of the call package, uh, where the, we call the multi, multi download to download uh, that file into R. So they just use the drl.create. This is going to create a, a, a working directory. And the name of that directory is data. Then we say show one in is equals to false. Then they will they make use of the call multi download function where they pass in the URL, the URL, the URL of that file. Then they said for every resume, once we come back to this code, it should always be true. So once we have already uh, downloaded this file, if we come back to this file, we run this chunk, it's going to recognize that we already have uh, this file uh, in our working directory. So it's not going to download that file because it takes quite a lot of time, close to 15 minutes for me before I was able to pull down uh, this data into R. It's about, it's nine, nine gigabytes. It's a very big data set. 
So the next step in which uh, the, uh, the discourse is to open the data set. So in order for us to open the data set, uh, we are where they make use of, they make use of the, uh, this open data set function that is coming from Arrow. So they just say open data set. Then for the sources, they pass in the parts, the five parts where we, where we download uh, the, the, and save the initial CSV file. Then for the format of the file, uh, they do specify that the format of the file is a CSV file. So once we run uh, that open, it's going to, it's going to open uh, this uh, CSV file. Uh, and for us to see the structure of that file, we just need to call CITL underscore CSV. Uh, once we call CITL underscore CSV, it shows a file system data set with one CSV file. That it has only one CSV file. Usage class is a string. Check that checkout type is also a string. These are all variables that we can find from those data. Then material type is also a string. Checkout year is an integer in 64, which is an integer. Checkout month is in 64. Checkout in 64. These are all integers. Then the title, uh, the title of the data set is a is uh, refer it represents a string. It shows that it's a string. Then ISBN number returns null. I think this is linked to the issue in which which is still open in GitHub. I think I post that issue on the chat because this is not supposed uh, to be null. Then, then creator should also be string. Subject is also string. Publisher is a string. And publication here is also a string. So this, this is just the structure uh, of the data set. We can also do the glimpse. We can also do the glimpse to also look at the uh, tidyverse way to print uh, that data set. Uh, so, so you can see that the string just show that this ISBN is just an empty string, that there is nothing there. That is why it's returning null. So the next thing is for us to do our data wrangling on this settle CSV file, which is we use arrow to, come to, that, to import. So we call the data set and then we are counting the checkout here. Then we say weight is equals to checkout, and then we arrange. That is, we arrange in ascending order of the checkout year. Then, in order for this computation to be called back to the memory of R, so we just need to use the collect. So once once we use this collect, R is going to run uh, the entire uh, computation, and we are going to get uh, the output. It shows that for the checkout here we have, which is an integer, we have a 2005, the number is around 379,379, uh, 37986.85. So, which is a very large data set that we load in. For 2006, the same thing. For 27, these are all the counts of the observation. Uh, that can be found uh, for that particular year because the beauty of using the arrow package to load this data set in is that if we use our default read underscore CSV, it might, it might take the entire memory of our system R might slow down in terms of the computation because it's a very quite large amount of data. So we need a better approach in order for us to load that data in, not in the memory, but on disks. We, want, we need to load that data on disks. So we, that is why we have to use uh, this packet, uh, this packet format. So the advantage, they do talk about the advantage uh, of using packets. So one of them is that the packet file are usually smaller, smaller than the than the CSV file because they are always smaller than CSV file and Packwood relies on efficient encoding to keep file size down and support file compression. So they is going to compress this file. Maybe we have like 500 megabytes 
a file that is had a data set, the size of that file is around 500 megabytes. So when we use the arrow to read in that data set, it's going to compress that data set down to a very small, the number is going to be very small in which we can easily work with such amount, such data in R. So they also discussed that the Parkway file have a rich type system, which we talk about in section, I think section, they discussed about in section eight, it, it has a rich type system. So that, that is the type of the file is very consistent because normally if we have a data set like a CSV file, which has a date in this column, so R is going to be thinking on how is it going how when you are using read underscore CSV, it's going to be thinking the, the right format in which we are going to import this uh this date into R. But when we are using Parkwet, Parkwet will understand that this is actually a date and is going to read this data set in efficiently. So the next thing in which they discuss is that the Parkwet file are column oriented. This means they are organized column by columns, much like the R data frame. So they are column oriented. So they, they, they play very similar to our, to our data frame in which we are really familiar with when working with R. So, but they also, the last, they say the packet file a chunk, which make it possible to work on different parts of the file at the same time. So what do we mean by that? When we, when we use the open data sets to load in the packet file, maybe because, you know, initially looking at this code that I, I showed earlier on, uh, looking at this code, where is it? Okay, so maybe it's down. Maybe I will show down where we use group by. Maybe we have specific year. We can group by that specific year. Then before we now write those data, we will see it down. Maybe when I when I'm discussing about the partition and we what do we mean by chunk or empty? We can group by a specific year. Then when we write those data sets, it's going to write the data set based on different chunk in the separate folder. Then when we are to read in those, those the data set into R, it's just going to read one chunk, one of those files. It's going to read one file in, then we start working uh, with that file. Then when we are satisfied, we can now read the entire chunk of data sets in memory, and we proceed uh, with an analysis. So for the partitioning of the file, they say as data Get larger, storing all the data in a single file gets increasingly painful and it's often useful to split those data sets. So that is the main goal of using packets. So we need to split these data sets into different chunks so that we can be able to work uh, with them uh, more efficiently. So now we're writing the, our initial set of library data. So how do we rewrite it? So the first thing is for us to specify the packet file path that we want to use uh, to rewrite this data. So we said this file path is data. Within data, we have set of library checkouts. So that is the file path that we want to work with. So we now call our set of CSV file, and then we are grouping by the checkout here. So when we group by the checkout here, if we have 10 checkouts here, so we are going to have 10 chunks of data sets for the checkout here. Each checkout here is going to have its own chunk. Then we now use write underscore data set, which is coming from arrow. Then for the parts is backward parts. Then the format is backward. But the default, there are several there are several formats in which uh, we can write this data. We can use we can use the, the arrow, we can use feather, we can be CSV, it can be text. There are several formats uh, in which we can specify, but the default format is always uh, the default format uh, is always backwards. So in order for us to now see 
the size, the entire size of this file in which we have written out. So how do we do that? We just need to call table. Then we release the files, which is list.files. So where are those files found? The parkway parts. So we want to get all the list of files that can be found in this uh, working directory. Then we say recursive equals to true. And then we say size of MB, we are using the file.size, then we call the file.path, backward path and files. Then we are using the 1024, which is 1024 raised to the power of two. So when we use uh, this, if we execute this, is going to show that the checkout year of 2005 parts zero packets. The size is 109 megabytes. This is 164 uh, megabytes. This is uh, 178 uh, megabytes. Uh, this is 195. This is 214, and this is 222 megabytes. So. And remember that our initial size of our file, it was nine gigabytes of a CSV file that we initially imported into. How we loaded it with the packet, so we have been able to compress it. We can see that uh, we have different, uh, these are smaller chunk in which uh, we can easily uh, work with those data uh, in R before. Uh, we proceed. So I don't know if there are any questions uh, so that I can easily address that before uh, we go to the next part of the day, of the book. Um, one thing I wasn't quite sure of there on your family is um, the, the website that you're getting the data from, what sort of format? Do, can that operate in any format? Will it, will Canaro handle sort of anything where they put large CSV files online? Okay, I'm coming. Let's see. I think this is the website uh, we are getting. Let me put it in the chat. Then we will also open it here. Also, that is the website. So if I copy this link, let's see. Okay, so is, this is the settle open data check out by title. Okay, it has been updated. What in this data set? Check. So, Let's see one of those data. I'm not sure if it's a C. Let's check the book. I'm not sure. Okay, it's a CSV file. The data okay. is a nine gig here. It's a CSV file. Okay, so, so, so I could probably it's, try this on other websites that publish CSV. Yes, data. yes. Yeah. You just need to use this call package, then use the multi download, then you paste the URL of the data set here. So once yeah. you paste at the URL, then you say resume equals true. That means if you run, we just need to run it once. It will yeah. pull down the data and save that data in the directory called uh, data. So once you come back and run this function again, this resume true will detect that this data is already in the directory, so it will not download the data again. So it will only download it once. But once it detects that you have deleted the data from that directory, it will re-download the data again. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions before we proceed? We have seen how to rewrite. Uh, so now uh, the next part is uh, using dplyr R with arrow. How to use dplyr with arrow. So in this case, 
uh, we need to use the open data set again from arrow. Then we backwards parts with passing the parts where we can get our parquet uh, data set. So, and we save that as settle parquets. So now we need to now use our deep layer, all our code in which we still, we are all familiar with. So we have our settle parquets data and then, and then we filter, check out here that is greater than or equals to 2018 and Marita type that is equals to book. And then, we say group by, check out year and check out month. And then we, we summarize total checkout, which is sum of checkouts. And then we arrange by in ascending order by both checkout year and checkout months. So, but all these uh, steps, we are saving it in an object called query. We are saving it in an object called query. So once, uh, we call the query, so it shows this is a file system data set of query. It shows a checkout here, which is int 32, checkout month, which is int 64, total checkout, which is int uh, 64. And, and when we use, and for us to force uh, it to actually do this computation and bring everything back to the memory of R, we just need to pass query and then we say collect. So once we say collect, it will pull everything down into the memory. So we can see that we have group, checkout here, uh, checkout here, and we have checkout mods and total checkout, which is total that we have here. So, they just say like DB player arrow only understands some R expressions. So it does not understand the entire expressions of that is coming from DB player. There are some certain set code in which uh, you might want to execute. It might not run, but the, you can use question mark as zero in order for us to see uh, a complete list of currently supported function in which we have uh, from from the arrow, which we have from the arrow package. So let's quickly see that uh, for the, let's quickly see, these are the notes I was working on. So once we do that, I hope you can see my house studio. Yes, yeah, can see it. Okay. So once we do that, we can see that we have the B plus there we have anti join will work with arrow arrange will work collapse will work collect will work compute will work count will work distinct explain filter these are all all these B plus verbs uh once we'll relocate rename rename with they are they will they will all work they are all supported uh within the arrow so all these functions. Uh, they are all supported. Once we just do question mark uh, on that, uh, and we call, and we call a zero with a question mark, then we are going to have access uh, to the list of those functions that are supported by the package. So, like uh, in terms of the performance, so how do we measure performance? Maybe when we are working with maybe Dipla R, how do we compare the performance between Dipla R and Arrow? So we will see that in this other part. So here we have our settled CSV and then we do filter for all the year that are 2021. And then we have marital types that is equals to book. And then we say group by uh, checkout months. And then we say summarize uh, total checkout is sum of what the checkouts. And then we arrange in descending order of checkout months and then we collect, then we look at the system dot time. This one shows a user is 11.997, system is 1.189, then a lapse time is close to around 11.343 seconds. So that is a computation time uh, for this other code. But when we use, when we check another example using, Settle packets. This one is a CSV file that we load in. So now 
we are using certain pathways. This is a pathway file. We do the same computation. Then we check the system time. We can see elapsed is 0 0.063 a second. This one is around 11.343. We can see, we can see the speed with pathways. We can see how fast our 100x speed up in performance is attributed to two factors, the multiple file partitioning and a format of individual files. Because in Parkwet, we are going to partition those files into multiple files and those other. So it makes it read in us to read this data set into R more efficiently. So they say that the partitioner improved performance because this query uses checkout here equals 2021 to filter the data and Arrow is smart enough to recognize that it's only need to read one of 18 packet files. Then they say the packet format improved performance by storing data in a binary format. So because we are storing those data in binary formats, which is like zeros and one, so the performance are uh, of our data uh, the, in terms of speed is very fast because I understand how to work uh, with those data uh, sets. So in this other part, they were talking about using DB player with arrow, DB player which is used to communicate uh, uh, with our database just as we learned uh, in chapter 22 of the book last week. So in this case, we just need to use arrow to dog DB. So when we use arrow to dog DB, we are going to convert this arrow to a database, to a dog DB database. It will, it will look as if this data set lives in a database. So we have our packet file, and then we say to dog DB is going to convert it to a database. And then we do our filter, we do our group by, we do some summarize, we look at a range, which is in descending order of the checkout year. And then when we do collect, which is going to run uh, the computation issues, missing values are always removed in SQL aggregations. And it around them is true to silence this warning. Uh, this one is, is, displayed, is displayed once every eight hours. So this is the checkout year. And this is the total, uh, this is the total Check out. So they said uh, the neat thing about to doc DB is that the transfer doesn't involve any memory copy, does not copy to memory and speaks to the goal of Arrow ecosystem enabling a seamless transition from one computing environment uh, to, to another. Okay, so, so like a uh, like in the uh, what we what I was able to cover, we have seen how to deal, how to import a large data set in which uh, which does not fit very well in the memory of uh, R when we are working with data because if you are working with la a large amount of data set, uh, definitely you discover that R will keep on going slow and slow, and it will be very frustrating at times. So the, we have seen a more efficient way that we can use the arrow package to load in this large data set, which will split them into different chunks, and it makes uh, uh, importing them, makes it 10 times what faster when we are working with such a uh, file, because uh, the file partitioning how is going to order them in such a way to make it very easy for us to import uh, this data into our, I don't know if uh, there are any uh, comments or further contribution before. Hello. Uh, no, that, that's all great. Thank you very much. 